there was this Belgium or Finland decision making and then just yeah Finland won the battle basically now I call it more like eco erotics what I do talking <laughs> about the painting above but I'm not even sure Th we can this see one it. hello Camilla hello Leda how are you yeah, I'm, I'm good there is sunshine outside so I'm quite good that always helps <laughs> yeah can you tell us a little bit about yourself uh, so I'm Kamila Sladowska. I'm a visual artist based in Helsinki uh, in Finland, but I'm from I come from Warsaw and that's where I got my education uh, and I work. I'm a painter. Um, I, I make, let's say, transdisciplinary painting or like painting installation. I went to the Academy of Fine Arts in Warsaw. Meanwhile, uh, just to make sure I will be able to make the living like out of something related to visual arts and also I, I've wanted to learn to work with textile so I went to study two years of costume design at uh, International School of Costume and Fashion Design so there I learned how to the pattern making uh, like the the knowledge about fabrics uh, and then I thought I would probably because the theater and film industry is quite big uh, in Poland so then I thought that I would probably work with this and then I will try also to paint and make a, the living out of this so trying to combine but then like the COVID-19 and the pandemic uh, made it just impossible for me to work and to find any any job in Poland also like due to political situation in Poland I, I did not want to to be there and also probably some other factors so then we have been considering with my partner, who is a composer, where to go. My partner was suggesting more of like a Nordic country. And I was like, all right, like if, if we choose a Nordic country, then like Finland seems the most interesting to me. Culturally, it has been a bit different for, for a longer time, uh, Finland. So I, I found it interesting and worth trying. Yeah, and it's, we're here since like, it's going to be the third year this year. Not so long. Yeah, yeah, not yet. <laughs> not yet. And how do you feel here as an yeah, artist? And yeah, I enjoyed it. I, I really enjoyed the art stage in Finland. And also, I really enjoyed that I can bike to my studio every day and that I can also have like more probably eco-friendly life. So I, I do enjoy it because also I feel cozy here also regarding the art stage that many people know each other and it feels supportive and yeah the choice of um of the techniques i use the subjects are are pretty much inspired by um let's say firstly i was calling that it's inspired by posthumanism but then like or firstly firstly i was really influenced by this eco-feministic um thought and I'm still influenced, of course. There are many reasons why I got interested in the relationship of humans and nature or like in in this eco-feminism or now I call it more like eco-erotics, what I do, <laughs> because it's more inclusive in a way uh, or like post-humanism. How did you end up in this eroticism in your work? So it, it has been like, um, mm, well, long way <laughs> somehow, but... Um, I think like first of all uh, as a person coming from like a very catholic society I can say that like catholic societies have a lot of issues or like a lot of boundaries about sexuality and for example in Poland there is no really like sex education and I think it's important to speak about it and not to treat it with like shame but on the other hand like I've been researching this like connection to the ecosystem and I think like we can somehow like try to connect through empathy so that's how I think like this eco-eroticism like it's a way to connect everything <laughs> in a way and uh, yeah like that's a short response so I can show the book about plant genitals because also I think sustainability is something more than like just our relationship or like I don't like the word sustainability because it's 
It has been used for greenwashing purposes a lot. This this is a quite inspiring book about plant genitals and blossoming. And I think what I find like really interesting that we can also like learn from more than humans, non-humans, from the ecosystem. That for example, there is like a lot of like norms about sexuality in European culture, let's say, because that's what what we participate in. I think that uh, I find it quite inspiring that the ecosystem is in a way like non-binary and very diverse, especially like when it comes to the life of plants. But what are you working on at the moment? So currently, like, as you can see the paintings in the background, uh, I've been actually, I came back to um, more to painting on square shaped canvas in a way, but of course still I work on objects and I always, because I, I paint quite a lot with oil and I use quite um, slow techniques. Uh, I also work on recycled materials or using like biodegradable and like low um, impactful uh, solutions. Currently I'm, I'm working or my main focus is to create like um, a painting installation as an exhibition to be displayed at Asbestos Art Space in Helsinki. And I want to create this like uh, immersive eco-erotic painting installation. Do you have uh, a date for that yet or not? Yes, it's going to happen in November. I don't know, I don't have the date of the opening yet, but like at the end of November, like the second part of November. Oh, nice. So uh, like if you want to stay updated, like please follow my Instagram, Kamila Downslides Sladowska with W and SKA. I will write end. that down. By objects, uh, you mean uh, something like those petals on the walls or uh, something like works that are not square? Yeah. How do you so, define your objects? <laughs> yeah, the line is quite uh, thin of the definitions because I actually at some point I started to call my paintings like painting objects. But yeah, like so the paintings you see in the background are going to be, they're not finished yet, of course, as you can probably see, uh, but they're, um, they're like painting objects for me. But then, of course, like, um, for example, these petals, like, maybe I can show some. Um, like, they're, uh, they're also made, actually, it's recycled, recycled linen coming from this or sort of like de deconstructing uh, the, uh, the idea of traditional painting or like, yeah, of painting, let's say, on square shaped canvas. Then I also use sometimes um, shaped canvas or like, shaped cardboard to paint on and uh, I really like to treat my process as crafting because I think that's that's like more sustainable and uh, more authentic in a way. In the old techniques it's just square shaped canvas but then I started to experiment with them because why not like we're in like we live in 21st century we can use any we media. We can make it a bit like, more interesting for ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. And I've also started to include textile, like any technique that you can apply color on it. I call it like that it's like that I create painting objects and like any technique with the use of color is interesting to me. Like also sometimes I might work with video, but like somehow I really like this um, really personal interaction of, of an actual non-virtual object with the spectator. That's why I started to work with fabrics because like fabrics can also change color quite, you can like change and experiment with their color quite easily. This is a pattern for painting object. Are you treating paintings like uh, clothing a bit? More like a sculpture sometimes I would say, or, but for sure like um, pattern making comes out from like, history of clothing so I think any textile artist is always like somehow connected to this like clothing history because it's also the history of material. I try not to pollute the environment with my practice. I've mixed my first oil paint and I've decided to fully mix my own paints not not to buy them. Maybe I can even show... Yes if, if can... you show the the palette. Like the yeah the palette actually I this does not look so fancy, but I, I use this um, recycled pra plastic to, as a palette and, and that works. Uh, but also, can you put it? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to put it there. Yeah. Do you have some special routines in your work? What do so, you do usually during the day? So like my schedule, let's say it's quite irregular. 
and I do not enjoy it. It's I, I really like, I'm jealous about people who just like go and work from this hour to this hour. I mean, it has like also its disadvantages, but like sometimes it's challenging to have this irregular schedule in a way. Uh, but recently I have been trying to avoid coming back from my studio like at night, let's say at 1 a.m. or something. For me, for sure, like I, I really don't like overnight, uh, like making overnights with with art or with producing. Do people do that a lot? I, I think like there are artists who, who do this and they prefer to work at night. That does not work for me. I appreciate having daylight for painting, um, but also yeah, I think it's just healthier for me, like to... It's healthier you know, for everybody. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> For sure. So, and then also it's easier for me like to be just productive, you know. It also depends on the weather. If I feel like for painting, I really need like 100% focus or like really good focus. So I prefer to do it in during the days that are a bit pressure outside is like good and I feel good. And then like, so I, I'm really like attached to this like weather conditions in a way. I have like uh, cycles at the studio that again, like I work with this Paint certain painting techniques so it takes me it's like a really long process and first I need to collect because I try to collect treasures from second hand mm. or locally sourced and then I need to find linen I also try to find linen from second hand but this is not so easy because also yeah it's nicer to work on um, certain quality linen but like for example this used to be some sort of curtain and it's not so good like the or like it's not so soft it has a big pretty big texture yeah it has some texture but i actually enjoy it and yeah i think it goes well with with the team but like yeah for sure it it makes the process easier if the if the canvas is softer so, so yeah your paintings are not figurative or kind of semi there's this flowers yeah. in them or not entirely flowers yeah those mm. are like this is actually this is actually figurative it's quite a postmodern sort of or, or like a technique inspired by postmodern um painters or artists where you depict something that is uh that seems like not realistic but in fact it's realistic and in that case it actually goes uh together with the uh, theme of the installation that I'm working on, like this eco-erotic concept, let's say. When I started to research on that, I found um, like, like sex toys, which are um, more than human inspired or like non-human. We're talking human. about the painting above, but I'm not even sure uh, we this can one. see it in uh, so, the frame. Uh, or actually, <laughs> maybe I can... Yeah, no, like I this think. one. So... Um, so then I've started to research like these sex toys or like I've basically typed in Google eco sex toy. And, and then you ended up with an octopus. I, I've ended up with an octopus, not only because there had there has been also like quite beautiful like uh, like vegetables, like glass vegetables, but it's inspired by by octopus. So in that sense, like it's inspired by more than human life. Um, there, there are discussions, um, quite interesting discussions nowadays, like how to call elements of the ecosystem that are not humans. Um, so yeah, that's why I'm mm. like um, well, non mixing. Non-human, I guess. It yeah, non-human. But then it's like also there is this discussion about like colonial perspective on. Uh, yeah, maybe I hang it again. Uh, on uh, colonial like uh, gaze on like ecosystem and like on reality let's say so then like when is when we say like non-human we split up which might be which might lead to certain like discrimination or yeah i guess i'm interested how this discussion will will develop and in the future i usually like try i avoid like non-human word and um i rather say ecosystem or like yeah mm. like organism but that's a quite interesting like linguistic discussion would you say that uh having other artists around you is important yeah it's definitely important because i think like even though quite often i'm just like closed in my studio i think 
art cre art making or like art is a collective process so it's not that I like oh i'm a, like a genius who's creating this and that like this concept from 19th century but it's more like about creating specific language which describes reality the reality around us how do you find uh, other like-minded people here as a person who came from somewhere else not too long ago i was really lucky to uh, to come to for an internship uh, for an internship at mimolakaxi gallery i'm really lucky that i can basically exchange with other artists and like meet people and experience art maybe move to towards the studio a bit we are in your studio right now it's pretty small how big is it it's just nine square meters and it's because i'm trying first of all i try really also my home is not so big and i try to reduce the my emissions in in my life and the the need of like using electricity and heating up spaces so for now i i just go with nine square meters and i try not to fill it up <laughs> too much would you share a space if it was bigger but with other people in it yes so uh, actually because my process is it might disturb people a bit because sometimes i melt for example beeswax which not everyone wants to smell and it creates quite a lot of fog like it looks a bit scary it's not and it's it's actually all right but yeah like not everyone might like this so i think that is the main reason because actually it would be nice to to rent with some friends where do you store your work i mean you can't store it all here yeah so it's like it somehow circulates let's say <laughs> some but I, I come and go but i have like the, my main base is at my home yeah and from there i distributed the artworks that i i am planning to re remake or like upcycle then i store them at my studio the ones that i want to continue working on i i again like store in my studio but the ones that are finished i try to to bring to my home yeah and then like somehow it circulates and it goes further i have also some artworks stored in in poland What's your favorite thing about your studio? Mm, I think the access to the daylight, that it's on the top of the building and I have really, really good access to the daylight. Do you think you could do without a studio? Could you just paint at home? For now, I can't imagine this. And I've been doing it during um, the cycle of my studies and that has been horrible. <laughs> Would you share with us some artists that you follow and like? For me, it, it has been quite difficult to respond to this question because throughout art history, there is like plenty of artists or artworks that have inspired me. Um, but it has been quite um, a turning point for me when I have seen Sheila Hicks or Hikes, depending on the country where you're at the pronunciation, uh, exhibition at Saint Pompidou. Yeah, I've already mentioned uh, Gerard Trichter. Maybe on the example of these artworks. Yeah, maybe I've right been, now. What is, what is, I, I guess recently I've also took out again my inspiration by um, Alina Shapochnikov, uh, a Polish artist who has a really interesting biography actually, or like quite tragic biography because uh, she has been working with what is it called? Epoxy. Epoxy? Is, yeah. So Alina Shapochnikov has been working with epoxy and uh, she has been creating really amazing feminist artworks, sculptures, um, researching her body and her physicality. Her body has been in contact with this epoxy. And uh, Isn't because that very it, toxic it's and... very toxic and she died from uh, she suffered from breast cancer. But her her artwork really has impacted on me a lot and probably Knowing this, I've also been really aware or like really careful with the mediums I, I use because it's really important for me like to have this sort of circulation, you know, like feeling that like everything circulates and mm -hmm. at least like it biodegrades. Yeah, I also have enjoyed a lot or like I got inspired a lot by Magdalena Moskva. She's a contemporary painter uh, from Poland. 
I'm, I'm trying like to get back to my uh, Polish roots. For me, actually, at some point, like ecosystem and like life of organisms has been still is like a big inspiration. And I read quite a lot of books written by biologists or scientists, let's say, about that. Yeah, like I've also I, I really enjoy because I'm trying to give like women references or like female references because I regard what I do or like I regard myself and what I do feminist. So uh, there there has been this like conceptual installation maker or like she's, she still creates uh, Katerina Grosse, like this immersive installations. Thanks a lot for being my guest today and for bringing me to your studio. Thank you so much. It has been a pleasure. Thank you for interviewing me. Good luck with pleasure. your project and the upcoming exhibition in the autumn. Thank you and welcome everyone.